Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're in Vegas Pro 18, and we're taking a look at the colorize effect. Also, I do want to note, too, that the titles, you know, might not be a good candidate. So if there's old black and white titles, it might not colorize them the way you expect. That looks like something made out of Windows Movie Maker. You need to go to your video transition effects and go to colorize. I would just start typing in color, and you'll see right at the bottom, colorization is what it's going to be called exactly and you need to make sure you have Vegas deep learning models installed if you don't you'll have a big error message that says install Vegas deep learning models if you also if you're seeing that error message and you do have it installed restart Vegas this should pop up just like this you shouldn't see the error message anymore. go ahead and drag and drop the default right onto this now it's gonna take it a second and that's okay because it's very CPU intensive. It's drawing colors onto this. And you can see right out the gate, it's it feels like it's almost done right out the gate. But there's a couple of things we can do to really make this better. Now for the luminance enhancements, what this does, what happens is when you add color to something, you actually change the brightness value of something. So what this does is it can actually alter the luminance value for your for your final product. What I'm going to do is actually just hit none for the sake of uh, argument here because it doesn't do a ton of difference but if you're having issues where the color is actually changing the brightness of your film more than you want it to then uh, that this is the setting you need to mess with. Now precision. Now this one's a bit counterintuitive because if you go to match input size it's going to take it quite a while to colorize but if you go to match input size it's going to like pixel per pixel try to draw in the color and you would expect that this would be better but it's always worse in fact some of the demo stuff I did is because I was trying to do it as high and perfect as possible uh, and there are some things that are better but so there's problems because when you do it pixel size you're actually importing some issues you're importing look at this screen bleed right there that's from an old lens with the light not evenly distributing across the old lens there's a bit of a vignette right so you actually colorize back in the vignette mistake the higher input is not always better in fact I like low and the reason why I like low is because the computer looks at it in more of a broad spectrum it doesn't look at the whole picture and think oh let me try this let me change that let me change that it makes it go that's a window that's a wall that's a fence and that actually gives you a better result especially from some lower fidelity footage where where you know there's lots of light bleed see that's a light bleed that's just a problem with the original footage you know you can see actual screen tears and um, scratches and grain inside of the screen so those issues also, ha you know, the colorizer has to look past those issues as well. So I like low because it does a great job of ignoring them. Now this invert red and green and blue and yellow, this is a way that you can adjust some major effects if you feel like the colorizer is getting it wrong. But I don't think the colorizer is getting it wrong here. Now this is where your really bread and butter is. The shift green, to green and red and the shift blue and yellow. These are where you're really going to see the difference. Now the thing is it is a bit CPU intensive so again you'll probably want to cut the titles out but uh, shots like this this is a really 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 poor implementation this one thing so if you shift the red to green just a little bit on this bad shot here what you really want to look for when you're doing this is you want to look at whites and skin tones you want to make sure that white like the white collar on his shirt and things like that stay white looking and and I think this is an actual older style where the white collar is actually a different color than the shirt you want to try and get white to look different uh, the white to look like white and skin tones to look like skin tones those are two things you're trying to match up the most and so you have to play with these dials a little bit on some of the bad frames you need to come back to the other frames and check and make sure that these those frames are also improved now you're still going to have some random frames where things get bright all of a sudden uh, and that's because there's a bulb and a flicker and we're going to have another tutorial about flicker reduction and things like that but that's just the nature of the beast with this old projector in footage like that's a tear in the film right so that's not what we're talking about right once you get something kind of close to what you want then go ahead and render it out 
Now, the reason I say that is because the colorizing effect is, is especially if you're using higher grades of it, is, is heavy on the CPU. And also, you want these colors to become real. Right now, the computer, they're fake. They've added in. We're going to realize this color and now have a final product that has a color. So we're going to render it out as a intermediate codec. So the reason we're not doing the standard MP4 is because an MP4 is actually not a good editing codec because it throws away information and it's actually what's called interframe where the beginning of the f footage is the reference for every other frame so when you make one change to the beginning frame it changes all the other frames based off that so if we're gonna do something that we're purposely putting back into the editor we want something that's not gonna lose any quality so with this intermediate codec, we're going to go with one that I custom made out of this one right here. So this is one that you're going to have, and you're going to want to open up Customize Template, and you're going to want to change the frame rate, and you're going to want to change the frame rate to 24 frames per second if your old footage is shot in 24 frames a second. There's a chance that the filmed footage that's actually filmed, black and white film, that you're changing to, to color is different there's a chance that it is and so if match your source footage chances are your source footage was shot at 24 frames per second if it was shot in America maybe 25 frames per second if it was shot in Europe for me I went ahead and I saved that default and I saved it under a different name you can change the name up here and hit this little save icon uh, after you've changed the frame rate once you have it saved you can select it and then you can render it out just hit render once it's you got your render section highlighted like always and you can always have your render options to render loop region only so boom you have that rendered out so now I'm gonna delete that because this is what I did previously is I rendered it out because it was colorized frame by frame you're gonna notice some jumps and bumps and colors especially because there's lighting changes and flickers and bulb flickers and things like that don't worry too much about that we're going to do some blanket corrections now i do want to note that if we were adding this back again do you see these animation things you can actually animate your red and your green keyframes for each and every keyframe you could color correct and animate each and every keyframe before you render it out to make sure they're more exact and perfect to do some general corrections over the whole little project here we're just gonna hit alt and G and uh, have your clip selected and then you're gonna be in your color grading panel and you need the RGB parade up because that's gonna be your best uh, show of what the issue is and pretty much every single frame here the green is a little too high and the blues are right where I want them and the reds are a little low but there's also a lot of red saturation so maybe the red should be low so here's the decision I'm gonna make I'm actually just gonna take this green right here make sure this is highlighted again take this green right here and I'm just gonna lower the green you can see how it lowers over here I'm gonna lower the green to a little below the blue that that will reduce the green and up the blue values until it gets that toilet paper on the car there actually hits a more white and now you want to because every shot's a little different see this correction throughout you want to check and make sure that this correction is something that helps out the whole thing in general not just that one frame in general now something else I want to point out too when this is highlighted is you can go to the input and output and you actually might want to change the contrast and here's why the contrast that was originally shot in was shot for black and white uh, but now that you've added color you might need to readjust some of the contrast to uh, the colors brighten things up a bit and things like that this might help a lot if you can kind of darken it a little bit and brighten it a little bit give a little more contrast back into this old image but see you got to be careful though because though I made that one image look good I actually kind of really messed up the rest of it a little too much so make sure this is highlighted again I went way too dark on the darks so uh, for example right here the shadow just take a look at that see how it kind of blackens out a little bit what you want to do is get that shadow to kind of darken out and black out but everything else to kind of stay consistent in a gradient of gray and so usually you're gonna see a very small like input min change of 0.04 very small change 
to contrast uh, if you're trying to add contrast back into pre previously shot footage. And then uh, here we're going to brighten it up just a touch too because I feel like we can bring some of the highlights back without overexposing it. Um, so I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit. I don't want my blues to sky there. I don't want my blues to start hitting the top because then they're going to start turning white. But just a touch of brightness there and the faces kind of show up a little clearer too. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, anything you buy through my affiliates links helps out this channel a ton. We've got all the Vegas Pro 18 new effects. So I'm going to do a tutorial on each of these, including lots more tutorials after that on Vegas Pro. And thank you so much for watching. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. I'll see you next time.